Philosophy. Philosophy is an onion baked in the sky. Philosophy is a force field of recognition for the soul. Philosophy is dedication to the art of cognition. Philosophy is the love of wisdom and knowledge. And I am deluged with the power of philosophy. I can do things with my philosophical mind that no one else has yet conceived of in the world, ever, in the grand expanse of time prior to my soul arriving on the planet in 1975. It was a monumental year. It was the year the film The Man Who Would Be King came out, funnily enough, and The Rescuers. And therefore, the two combined, not that I ever saw the first one because it was an adult film and I was a nipple, but I saw The Rescuers. And funnily enough, The Rescuers is actually the first film I remember at the cinema. I remember, I remember the little chaps on, on flying as a little baby. But it wasn't the first film that made me see the true power film. I've already discussed that before. Can you shut up, you antisocial motorcycle motherfuckers? <coughs> Honestly, with the barbarous noise of those bally engines, it's hardly a one to be yet any sleep at night, I tell you. This is not the only animal that curves the balls. The philosophy of being a believer in God. It's actually under attack from all sides by ignorant credits. <coughs> Atheists are the footmen of soldier, soldiers of Satan and they don't even know it. That's how fucking thick they are. They are thick, atheists. They, they think they're not. They've got a few leading lights of pseudo-intellectualism who really bolster the notion emphatically that there is an absolutist approach to there being no God. And I'm sorry, but that is just evil and dangerous because it's not true. I know it's not true. I've had prayers answered. I've witnessed miracles in my own world, right? I've had many epiphanies. And I know it is philosophical ignorance to declare atheist as an absolute reality. It is just not right. It's just wrong on so many levels. And that sort of thing leads to bad shit. Right? That's what's going on in the world. That's why there's so much crime in this world now. Because people have lost the way with God. They think it's a free-for-all where someone's things might be theirs in their eyes. They just can take it or fraud or perversion. All these wicked things that just destroy society. Like hard drugs and violence and thugs and bullies and scumarati. Right, it's just gross, man. It's really bad, and and therefore we need a hero. We need another hero of our times. We need a new hero to reinforce the word of God into the people. Because it's not meant to be scary a relationship with God, right? That's not the point of believing in God. It's meant to be a way. Okay, it's meant to be a way through the evil bollocks. It's not meant to be the evil bollocks. Is meant to be the way through the evil bollocks. And, um, yeah, I feel like I'm protected by a divine force field much more than I'm not. In fact, if I'm honest, I haven't had a really bad dream for a long time. And I'm schizophrenic, so you could argue that my day to day reality is the nightmare. But I like to look on the positive and think I sleep like a baby. It's great. I, and, and when you go to sleep, the mind machinates subconsciously into another realm of reality entirely. We know this, this is fundamental basics, right? But what is going on? And where are we? And what is that place in the dream world? And what is going on? And what are those stories doing? And I think because I'm quite a placid chap, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not violent. 
I'm not, and I'm not very angry unless I'm in a really bad mood, uh, which is not often. And so if someone has got me in a really bad mood, that's probably a sign they're not really playing the full wicket. Right, okay. So, uh, no, most people I think are really much better than you'd have them given credit for. There's lots of lovely people out there. The sweet ones I adore. Our new neighbour seems lovely, garrulous, lovely chap of big beaming smiles of positivity and love, right? What's not what's like? And we've got the lovely couple downstairs who just, both of them, beautiful, right? And the woman in particular, my God, what a lucky sausage he is, right? How did we get onto this? We're talking about philosophy. Ah, yes, the freedom of the subconscious mind being open up to you right now. Here, I'm just going to let it fly, right? Let it fly. And what you're seeing is reality. Right, as you see, there's no editing, okay? This is one long shot. What you see is what you get, okay? And everything I say is actuality coming off the fly of my brain as we suffer these roaring, wrecking cars. Um, and and what you have to see and understand here is that there's no falsity in this performance, this actuality, this symposium to authenticity and veritas and verisimilitude, but not quite verisimilitude because it is reality, it's not appearing to be reality, it is reality. Verisimilitude by def definition is the idea of making something look real, okay, in cinema. So, like, when you see a film like Twister, and you see the incredible graphics of all the, what they call cyclones, what they call hurricanes, tornadoes, tornadoes, going round and round in that incredible CGI, okay. Well, that's verisimilitude. It's the, it's the appearing to be real. This is veritas, which is just truth on camera, spoken. They're not the same thing. And I invented the word veritas as a pretentious term in art for authentic filmmaking, which isn't fantasy, and it's sort of nearer to documentary, but it's too lazy to really be in a niche mode of specifics. And it's not got any bias intent. I'm really just bored. I want to have a laugh. And I thought, what should I do? Instead of sitting here waiting for my Chinese takeaway, I could uh, talk to camera and make something to maybe change someone's life in the world, you know. There are ways of changing people's lives out there. And I thought, you know, what have I got here? I've got an hour to wait before my takeaway take gets here. I could either sit there, like I usually do, pondering, listening to music, thinking deep thoughts about God and reality and life and loved ones and evil ones in general and all sorts of things. Or I could get up stand up for your right and make a, a lecture to camera about oh, whatever the fuck I've been talking about. I don't know, but the rambling spiel of the Veritas philosophy doth propose a form of inspiration to maybe the, I don't know who out there might see this, but someone, someone might see this and go, yeah, he's right. All those times I sit waiting for a takeaway, I could be working, I could be creating, I could be developing the future now. The profundity and the Zen knowledge that goes into my incredible lectures is something they will talk about for ions. I'm sorry, but I am not an unbeliever. I know there's a God. And I like him. And I think blue lights in the astral plane are a sign of good, good, good thinking, subliminal teaching from the aliens. And green lights are okay, red lights are a sign of danger. It's the same as on the other earth, it's why red light, uh, uh, traffic lights. Red is bad, green to go, but you get them in your eye, in your mind, in, and in the astral plane and things like that. But I, I, I mean, I don't have, have clear and present evidence red means evil. But I, I am, because I'm a human being, when I see red lights in my mind, 
I equate them with a, an alien warning system. And when I see green or blue, I equate them. Oh, that's all right, that's quite good. I wonder what the difference is, particularly between them morally or ethically. You know, I can, no one can tell me exactly. I think the blue might be the highest of virtues. I think the blue might be the caring angels, because that was the colour of the angels who came and visited me. Anyway, I'm probably about out of footage. And you're probably bored. And I've got to go. But I'm going to wait for that takeaway. And I want to thank my dad for buying that takeaway. And I really, really love my dad. And I think he's a nice guy. And he's done all right by me. And I've done all right by him. And my mum's all right as well. And my sister's excellent. And my friends rock. <laughs> so you could say it's not all too bad. Then again, objectively, I'm not Ryan Reynolds. So you could say, what is the point? There is no point. No one is that great a man than Ryan Reynolds. What a dude. That's the philosophy of the now. He should play, hmm, he should either go another comedy or now uber gravitas. But as a hero character, not a baddie, a hero but with gravitas. But I want to see a, a serious side to Ryan Reynolds. Definitely go back to comedy, but I want to see him stretch his wings. I want to see his range. You know what I'm saying? I'd love to work with Ryan. I wonder if I'd get on with him as a filmmaker. Uh, I wonder if we'd get on famously like fans. This guy's just tremendous. I, want to, I would pay, lay down my life for this Ryan man. Or maybe I wouldn't get on with it at all. And, he, and we'd think each other are out of balance. I just don't know, but I have to try and find out. So, you know, Ryan, if you're out there watching this, yeah, man, I'd love to make a film with you. <laughs> It'd be fucking brilliant. I think you've got such a funny sense of humour. I love what you're doing with Wrexham and Wales. And I think, I, but I want to see you in Gravitas. I want like, something space, in, about space, and nice lighting and beautiful planets and a story, but not Star Wars, obviously, and not Dune. They're very good, but we know, we're going to have to come up with something new, something incredible, something about quantum immersion and the bravery that goes into those who are prepared under synthetic conditions <coughs> to uh, enter the vortex of the Neverwhere, the infinity chamber, the light portal to the opening of the Terra Center in the core knowledge receptors of the flashing neuronic elements of the brain under synthetic conditions. And in that, therein lies a form of questing for a truth few know. But I'd like to talk about Ryan, to Ryan about it one day, make a film about it, because the world needs to know the dangers of what lies at the end of these terrible hard drugs people were doing in the 90s. That's so why a whole generation were lost to insanity at one level because we preferred dancing off our heads in fields to working hard at a vision. But we are coming round, we are, the survivors are coming round to working harder and raving off their heads on pills the rest of the weekend. I think their children do that a bit these days, but you know, anyway, it's all good. But is it all good? Is it really all good? Is it? Britain is now the second most depressed country in the world. How, do, how have we gone from sublime to the less than great? Right? We're, we're now misery land. Right? Wasn't it Banksy who made that? Dismal land, wasn't it? Dismal land. Well, okay, I'm going to suggest one bold statement. We need to build a new city, somewhere beautiful and in the heart of some area of countryside. Not a mass sprawling urban thing overnight, but I want the primary basis for having people there is that it, that it can be quite ramshackled and, and sort of unique, 
but every, every house, every area must be beautiful. That is the rule. And nothing, no, no orange square houses or buildings, like shop fronts, right? I'm none of that, right? Right angles are pretty much cancelled, okay? So, and straight lines I'm not too fond of either in architecture because they just look too simple, don't they? And, and, you, and no one wants to live in a shit house. And, and I'm sorry, we, my family lived in a, in a, in a concrete, on a, not concrete, in an orange brick house in Surrey in the 90s when my dad was trying to earn his crust. And it was a nice enough house, it was both standard, a little, a little four bedroom, nice kitchen, a nice modern build in the early 90s. And, and it was good, for, it served its purpose, but I've realised the benefits health-wise of living in a more aesthetically pleasing place is spiritually much more enhancing for the well-being of the psyche. And that's just the differential. And, and all that is, is an aesthetic issue. And if we don't want to rebuild a more beautiful Britain, well, that's just freaking lazy. And what's the point? You should want to build a beautiful Britain. It's where we live.